what I'm saying. I'm trying to get an idea of how much dirt is in here. Is it just is it right there? Is it? Here's the thing. I kept, that's what I kept. This was my, this was what I presented to my research. And I calculated by taking it off. You're not supposed to. Now I know it. I got away with it. I took that whole top off. I, I took a tape measure down there to see how high the garbage was. Oh, okay. Because I, I would petition the government. So you heard the director of pyramids tell me, don't worry, doctor. We're going to take care of this. They're going to fix this. But here's the here's when you came out of the first ascending passage and into the grand gallery. That's what this replicates. Mark later calls these the replica passages because when they were named uh, uh, by Sir Flinders Petrie the, the trial passages, people thought because that such hard construction to figure out how to make those passages fit inside there, they wanted to. The trial passages are part of the Great Pyramid Code. So interesting. I've done a lot of programs about these. Okay, so here's a picture of Giza, obviously the Great Pyramid's there. The unique location of the trial passages is one of the many clues of their key place in shedding light on the Great Pyramid and Giza. Now the way I find them when I look at a map like this is I follow a line through the center of the three Queen's Pyramids and that goes right to the trench. Okay, now here's another view. So the trench is uh, that's the line of the trial passages, the black line, the trench is just a little bit to the west there. They're parallel. Okay, now notice there's two parallel lines on the Great Pyramid over here that are similar. The red is the center of the Great Pyramid and the blue is the passage system 14 royal cubits offset to the east. Okay, so when we move the Great Pyramid over it fits exactly. That, th th there's a mimicking there of the trial passages and the trench of the Great Pyramid. That's one of the keys. I've, I've done things about that. Okay, now let's look at another thing that's revealed by this. So again, uh, there's where the trial passages are, okay? And there's four holes that go east-west through the trial passages. So here they are, one, two, three, four. Well, when you follow those, the line that they form, it points right, it's aligned with the grotto, the singular feature in the Great Pyramid that so little is done with. I'm pointing to the holes here that, that point toward the grotto. And so the grotto is often not pictured in pyramid pictures, but it's this cavity that's uh, in between the junction point of the first ascending passage in the Grand Gallery and the subterranean chamber. And uh, Alan Alford believes that's where Khufu's buried. I'm, I'm not saying it's that, but it's, it's this unique spot that's pointed to by the trial passages. Here's a an ancient drawing of the uh, from the Edgar brothers of the grotto. They don't let you go in there anymore. I don't know of anybody that's been there. Okay, this is where they are, but not many people uh, know about them. Okay, so let's look at the trial passages here. So on the right is the diagram of the trial passages, a, a side view, just like we've got the side view, the elevation view of the Great Pyramid on the left. Now here's, here's the connection. Okay, you can see there's a, a descending passage there, and of course the Great Pyramid has a descending passage. Okay, we can see that there's a, the first ascending passage in the trial passages and also in the Great Pyramid. There's a narrowing of the ascending passage in the trial passages that also appears in the Great Pyramid. Okay, then three, you can see that the, grand, the beginning of the Grand Gallery is in the trial passages. Okay, four, the beginning of the Queen's Chamber is in the trial passages. Five, there's the lower part of the descending passage, and that would be over here. And then Peter Le Messier suggests it's the subterranean chamber. That's a program for another day. Look at six. I've got it, I've got the six corresponds in red and bigger letters. Why? Bigger numbers. Why? Because people have said, well, that's the well shaft. But I've got a question mark in red there because that the well shaft does not correspond to where that is in the trial passages. That's where it should be. And we don't know of anything in the Great Pyramid that's there. But I think there is, because the trial passages are telling us there is. Everything else in the trial passages is in the Great Pyramid. But here's this singular well shaft, the big six there, and there's probably something in the Great Pyramid right there. Okay, and another reason I think that, because it's not going to be, that's where if the trial passages had something about the well chef, that's where it would be, that blue squiggle. But there's nothing in the trial passages like that. There's just that, that well chef, okay? And what's interesting, so since the uh, elements of the trial passages all have a spatially corresponding part in the Great Pyramid, is it possible this shaft indicates another passage? And guess what? This is where the void is that was found by the Scan Pyramids team. It's like that entrance would bust right through that void and it would be connected 
to this, this well shaft, which is in a sense bypassing the plugs which are down below. There's the, the, the bottom of that, that blue column is what are called the, the, uh, the blocks, the, the uh, granite plugs, they're called, that block the, you can't go up the first ascending passage. It's impossible. No one's ever done it. These granite plugs are in the way. Oh, but you can rise up. There's this, this, this blue column here that's really the, the, the uh, shaft that's going up to where the void is. Oh, that's the way in following the king. So that's interesting. Okay, so that's a hint for what's inside the Great Pyramid. But I'll finish with this. The trial passages also speak to the whole layout at Giza. But before I do that, let me add this interesting aside about the trial passages. Okay, Mark Foster's idea is this. So, you know, he said Al Maman probably knew the trial passages and was able to decipher a scale from the trial passages because the descending passage, which was known about uh, from antiquity, people knew about that, that it went down to the subterranean chamber, but no one ever wrote about this before El Mamam. His forced passage, which went straight through to it, is what opened that up for us. And so Mark Foster's idea is, how did you get so lucky as to go straight to it? Well, he said from, from uh, ascertaining the scale in the trial passages, because there's a scored line, a very definite scored line in the descending passage. Many people that have studied the period of pyramid have talked about that. And so there's a scored line in the trial passages. Now the trial passages are the same size as the passages in the Great Pyramid, but they're just shorter. So if you take the idea there's a scale then, you take the, the, uh, the distance to the scored line in the trial passages, and then you take the distance to the scored line in the actual pyramid, and that gives you a scale. And so Mark Foster has calculated a scale that would give him exactly this point. So if El Mamon used uh, that key, then he knew where this was. Now, what he think happened though, that, that uh, his men found the way up the well shaft, because you could get in this way, you could get up to the uh, king's chamber and whatever treasures were there, they saw them. And so of course, they're not able to get out this way because of the granite plugs. So they would have had to take him through the well shaft, which is very narrow, uh, restrictive, dark, and everything else. You, you couldn't get treasures through there. Oh, but if you chopped a hole, a bigger hole, because it's a pretty big passage, you could take whatever you were going to take out of the king's chamber, out this way. And so <clears throat> Mark Foster says that he didn't just luckily chop his way in. This hole was dug from the inside out. They were just making a way to get their treasure out. Interesting. Okay, here's a picture I took of the, this is the entrance to the trial passages. It's just what it looks like at the entrance of the Great Pyramid. It's a mimicking of the, of the front of the Great Pyramid right below the chevrons. Okay. So here's what I found. I did an, uh, an Instagram post about this. this. I just took a picture of the Instagram post here. So I measured the lines that are in the trial passage. I took the angle measurements. And what I found is, you know, they point right to the northwest corner of Menkara. They point right to the southeast corner of Khafre. They point right to the southeast corner of the mortuary temple for Khafre. They point right to the pyramid of Lahun down in the Fayum Oasis. This is incredible. So this, and, and so uh, there's, again, you can see the lines now. Those are the ones I took measurements of. So if you, you know, turn this, because they have them both facing south now, that's how those lines, I just followed what's there in the trial passages. Okay, again, there it is, and I just simply took these lines and measured them, and then I went from my field measurements and I put this on Google Earth, and it's what I just showed you. So I'll finish with this. This says to me that besides giving clues about the Great Pyramid, the trial passages are saying that Giza is a single build. This is a unitary plan. It wasn't three different competing pharaohs. There's a central unified plan for Giza, and the trial passages are a key partly to that. All right, thanks for watching.